Hello, welcome everyone to the last of our... Um, Interestingly, and this was a key insight for me, because I'm not from the social sector side of things, Newfoundland and Labrador, at least, has had a very successful... Years ago, we had the strategic social plan under Clyde Wells. When the, the Williams government came in, they emphasized an anti-poverty strategy, which really built on the strategic social plan. Our Provincial Department of Human Resources, Labor and Employment is really an innovative, partnering department that's done a great job on linking an integrated approach to social supports, education, employment development. And they've partnered extensively with community-based organizations in St. John's for employment of people with disabilities, homeless shelters, uh, youth at risk, Stella Burry, Choices for Youth. These are dynamic organizations with great leadership, with tons of money. Meanwhile, municipalities and economic development agencies are being starved. Yet it's the same governments dealing with these players. And I have some ideas around that, but they're still partially formed. But it, what also is becoming apparent, those dynamic, innovative social organizations are in St. John's and neighboring communities not in rural. So rural is also missing out on that. It doesn't have the dynamic leadership, doesn't have the capacity, doesn't have the partnerships with government. And that project, we're still going through the cases, writing it up. We have a workshop in June, so by next fall, I'll have some definitive stuff written up on it. The other key project I want to talk about is one that came out of the Canadian Rural Revitalization Foundation, SURF. We had several conferences and think tanks on rural-urban interaction, one in Tweed, Ontario, on the rural-urban footprint. We have a partnership with the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. I think uh, we have a colleague tuning into this uh, workshop from FCM. Um, and in Newfoundland and Labrador, the Harris Centre and Memorial are partnering with municipalities in Newfoundland and Labrador on this project. And it's on the governance of rural-urban interaction. One part of it, working with Alvin Sims and his grad students in geography at Memorial. Alvin is a guru of geospatial analysis. Using geographic information systems and geospatial tools to look at the linkages between communities in regions, particularly urban and rural. But we're at, in fact, looking at the whole province, all relationships. And then we're looking at, led by Kelly Vaden in geography at Memorial, member of the SURF board who uh, is also, both Alvin and Kelly are collaborating with David Freshwater from the University of Kentucky, current acting head of rural development at the OECD. On what are the governance mechanisms? If people are living their lives across these regions with these different connections for labor market for some, for healthcare, for education, for water supply, for recreation, for shopping, all different maps, although a lot of overlay, uh, how are they making decisions in those communities around those interdependencies? For the most part, they're not. And Alvin and Dave are, are developing a tool, a regional development viability index that will be on the web that builds in the algorithms around what are we learning on what connections between communities seem to have the most impact on viability. It's a tool. You'll still need to factor in human thought and politics, and, but they're, it's going to be a pretty useful, useful tool. And finally, the project through Municipalities Newfoundland Labrador has funding for community outreach, engagement, knowledge mobilization. Every uh, MNL right now, in fact, in Gander, there's a conference where someone else is delivering an update on this project. And the rural-urban linkages are multifaceted. Bill Reimer did this version of, uh, of the discussion relating to trade and commerce, relating to functional issues around carbon sequestration, water protection, recreation, institutional around health, education, social economy, NGOs, all have different boundaries. Environments don't care about the boundaries. Water, air, climate. And look at Iceland and its linkages to Europe. The volcano doesn't care if Europe's not part of their country. But Europe sure cares. Not that you can do anything about a volcano. Maybe the oil in the Gulf is a better example. And then common identities. And we all have differing commitment 
to the community you're born in? Are you from Placentia Bay or from the Bay de Verde Peninsula or from St. John's? Are you a townie or a bayman? Not many people describe themselves as an Atlantic Canadian. Donald Savoy finally owned up on that one. The Maritimes, maybe, but Newfoundland is different. We know that. We're happy to partner. Our administrative boundaries may be convenient constructs, but let's be careful how we use them. Some of the work with the index Alvin's building on, this one just shows you labor market areas, and the, uh, the darker blue shows the areas that were journey to work patterns in 2001 and 2006. The lighter blue are new ones that showed up in 2006. And the red were there in 2001 and stopped in 2006. So the Avalon Peninsula on the far right there, uh, the southern Avalon is dying. The fishery is gone. So communities that used to be integrated around the loop are now retirement palliative care cul-de-sacs. Millertown, right in the middle of the island, the light blue there, my wife is from Red Indian Lake, has a new mine. And the light blue there goes up by the Springdale area with the other light blue at the top of the map next to the Northern Peninsula. People are commuting from Bay Vert, where they used to have a mine, into the center of the Newfoundland where the new mine is. So th this map, when you start to overlay other data with that, is going to be a really useful tool. In Newfoundland and Labrador, we have a lot of municipalities. We have a lot of local service districts, much weaker than municipalities. And we have 137 communities that are unincorporated. We're not unique. Northern Ontario has a ton like it. Maritimes are less so. It's less geography. New Brunswick has some. I don't know about Nova Scotia. <coughs> One CMA in the St. John's area, increasingly dominating the province. We're becoming more like Iceland. Manitoba, where there's one center dominant, Nova Scotia. My understanding of Halifax is the geography of the amalgamated municipality is bigger than PEI. That is nuts, in my opinion. We can talk more about that. And then there's some other smaller urban centers. There's very little connection between neighboring communities. And yet there's a lot of issues they're wrestling with for survival, from tax base, municipal operating grants. There are increasing use of regional centers. Along the Transcanda Highway, Clarenville, Gander, Grand Falls, Deer Lake, Corner Brook, Stephenville, the Walmarts are bigger than in St. John's. The home hardware can't keep paint in the store. They've got new neighborhoods going in with expensive houses. But the rural communities on the periphery are evaporating, with a few exceptions and becoming cottage country with liviers who stay throughout the winter just like some fishermen used to while everybody else went back to England. Yet there's increasing standards as there should be for water quality. There's lack of data and policy and planning. We're a basket case for local regional planning, land use planning. There's low municipal election candidacy because the stakes are so low, why would you run? And critical capacity gaps. So municipalities in Newfoundland and Labrador are partly supported through the work of this project, but also on their own, with a lot of support from ACOA, has been really working on regional cooperation, looking at community partnerships, regional service delivery arrangements, intermunicipal cooperation, service sharing partnerships, some cases amalgamation, where it's bottom up. The province failed in a forced amalgamation when Clyde Wells was in. So just like the resettlement word, there's the amalgamation word. You don't dare near raise either one. In 2003, MNL did a survey. 52% of municipalities reported sharing services voluntarily. By 2007, the reporting was 76%. So they're doing it out of necessity. Yet there is no governance framework or incentives or facilitation to help it happen. 